there and welcome to another video. It's Christmas week 2022 and as you can see I've just left Hartlet Point Heliport in Devon, United Kingdom and we are flying out to sea in a Castle Air Augusta 109 helicopter. And this is where we are heading today, the island of Lundy, located 20 kilometres west of the British mainland between the Bristol Channel and the Atlantic Ocean. In Lundy, we're going to stay in what has been described as the remotest habitable house in England, Tibbetts Admiralty Lookout. Lundy is England's most remote inhabited island and can only be reached in winter by helicopter. During the summer months, when the sea is much calmer, you can get a ride on the island supply ship, the MS Oldenburg. The sailing time on the supply ship is 2.5 hours each way, but today's helicopter transfer is just 20 minutes from Hartland Point to Lundy Village. The cost of helicopter transfer is 150 GB pounds or 180 US dollars return. After a fairly short flight, you can arrive at Lundy Helipad, just south of the village. The island's permanent residents provide ground crew and emergency response teams for helicopter operations. From the helipad, it's a two minute walk into the centre of the village. And I need to make a quick office call to the island's management office to book in and collect the keys for Tibbet. So I want to make the first part of the video about the house itself. So we can come back and look at the village later. 95% of Lundy residents and visitors live in the village, located here with a white arrow on the aerial photograph. Where we are visiting and staying today is miles away in the north end of the island. Tibbetts Lookout is located here, two miles north of the village. And apart from the old light cottages, Tibbetts is the only habitable dwelling outside the village on the island. Getting to Tibbetts Lookout is easy. You just walk, there is no transport on the island and there is a single dirt track that runs north to south the full length of the island. You follow that for about two miles. At a leisurely pace, it will take you about one hour. Tibbetts Lookout has its own access track from the main island track and is located on the high ground at the top of Tibbetts Hill. You can't really miss it in daylight. So, here we are finally. Tibbetts Lookout, Lundy. According to Wikipedia and TripAdvisor, the most remote habitable house in England. This is an aerial view facing west and panning north to look at the north of the island. This is the ground we covered to get out here, the south of the island. You can just about make out to the tower of St Helen's Church in the village, next to the helipad where we started from. And to the right of that is a silhouette of the old lighthouse on Beacon Hill, and then padding out towards the Atlantic Ocean. This is a view out to sea on the eastern side of Tibbetts. Tibbetts sits at the top of the eastern cliffs with an unobstructed view of the major sea lane, the Bristol Channel. After all, that's why it was built. In fact, let's take the opportunity now to look at the building's history. Although not a direct reason for Tibbetts construction, it was the loss of the Dreadnought-class battleship HMS Montague in 1906 on Lundy's West Side Rocks that focused the Royal Navy Admiralty's strategic view of Lundy. The Montague was almost brand new, having been built in 1899, and was super advanced for its day. It would have been the present-day equivalent of the space shuttle crashing on Martha's Vineyard. Three years after the loss of the Montague, in 1909 the Admiralty created a signalling and observation shore party to be based in a purpose-built lookout post on Tibbetts Hill in Lundy. Their role was to observe, log and report all shipping transiting the Bristol Channel and communicate with Royal Navy ships by semaphore and signal lamp. In 1906 radio telegraphy was still in its infancy. Tibbetts communicated with the Admiralty on the mainland via a fixed line telegraph and were then the final link to shipping out at sea. The signal station was crewed by four Royal Navy personnel. On the roof of the stone built signal station was a wood constructed observation post with a semaphore post and a signal lamp. A flagpole flew the white ensign to the front of the signal station and a string of signal flags from it. Even in 1909, the technology Tibbetts was using was behind the times. And very quickly, radio telegraphy and then voice radio made Tibbetts redundant. Although it was used as a war watching station during World War I, 1914 to 1918, the German Imperial Navy never came anywhere near Lundy. In 1926, the Admiralty closed the station and withdrew the personnel. 
The building was then passed to the island's owner, and in the 1930s to the 1960s, it was used as a storeroom, a summer house and a guest house. When the Landmark Trust took over the running of Lundy in 1969, for the next couple of decades, Tibbetts was refurbished and improved into its present-day form. This is Tibbetts Admiralty Lookout today. The circular dry stone wall is fairly new, constructed in 1989 from reclaimed stone, and it replaced the rusted away iron railings that were originally here. This wall is to prevent cows and sheep using Tibbetts as a shelter, but also the wall gives some protection against Lundy's fierce Atlantic winds. OK, so that was the outside of Tibbetts. How about the inside and the interior of this structure? Well, what I think we'll do now is a tour in the style of through the keyhole. Now, Tibbetts might not have electricity. We're far too remote for mains electricity. Even the village, uh, two and a bit miles away, only has electricity generated locally from 6am to midnight. But we can live without that because we've got gas for lighting. And I'll show you how to light the gas lights later. It is a bit precarious. And a very small water boiler to do hot water for the kitchen and for the shower. The shower's a bit of a revelation. We'll look into that in a second. Also, the heating is provided by a solid fuel stove, which keeps the place really snug and warm. So let's see how the Admiralty Lookout has been converted into quite a nice little remote cottage. Let's go for a tour. The modern Tibbetts is made up of three main rooms. Now, the Landmark Trust demolished the rotten wooden observation post on the roof and the outhouses that were now redundant in the 1970s and 80s. The bunk room is more or less exactly as it was under the Royal Navy. The observation post day room is now your lounge and your dining room. And what was originally the post storeroom has now been converted into a very narrow kitchenette with a tiny toilet and shower wet room at the end. This is the lounge then to start off our tour. You notice straight away that the lounge is fitted with all wood flooring and match boarding, which makes a really good insulator. The far wall to the left of the fireplace is the Royal Navy gun rack, which is still in place from its original fitting. The windows are historically accurate, but they are insulated reproductions. You have a sofa bed on the far wall and three armchairs. A dining table that seats four people. The original fireplace is now fitted with an Arga Wenlock solid fuel stove, which is safer and more efficient than an open fire. And across at the other side of the lounge and looking through the windows, on a good day, which isn't very common in Lundy, you can see about 20 kilometres out to sea to the east, and you have good all-round views of the rest of the island because you're at the top of Hibbert's Hill, the second highest point on Lundy. The bunkhouse or bedroom isn't very exciting, but it is practical. It contains the original four bunk beds from the Royal Navy signal station, which is fine for a couple or a family visiting. But the beds are designed for the early 1900s when people were much smaller. Me, being six foot two, I found these beds quite small and a bit uncomfortable. It is also quite chilly in here with no direct heating. The kitchenette is exactly that, a very, very small kitchen with literally enough of space for one person to prepare some food. You are provided with a gas cooker and a wood sink and work surface. The Landmark Trust also supplied assortment of pots and pans and utensils. For some reason, this comes as a shock to visitors who complained about it on TripAdvisor. What do you expect? The Savoy kitchens? At the end of the kitchenette is the toilet and washroom. Now, Tibbetts does have running water, but this is locally drawn from a borehole. It is a bit brown and brackish in colour, and you can't drink it. But it's fine to wash with and other uses. The toilet is also a full flush toilet and discharges to a local septic tank. Now, don't complain about this. Before the Landmark Trust installed this running water system and flush toilet, you were using a composting long drop toilet out the back. The washroom is also a wet room, which means that the shower head discharges all over the toilet pan and the floor. Showering in Tibbetts is an acquired skill. Also, if you are simply in there to use the toilet, make sure you don't accidentally activate the shower or you'll get soaked. Without electricity, Lighting in Tibbetts is all by gas lamps. So my tip from the top is to bring with you a couple of battery powered, high intensity LED lanterns. Lundy gets very dark, very quick. 
lighting the several gas lamps in the Tibbers is an acquired skill. And to be fair, we've not really used gas lighting in the United Kingdom for over a century and a half now. But I do enjoy the nostalgia value of lighting Victorian era gas lamps. Once all the gas lights are lit, there is nothing more satisfying on a winter's night in Tibbets than getting a roaring fire going on the Wedlock stove. Despite no electricity, with the gas lamps and fire going, Tibbets is surprisingly snug and homely, even in the middle of December. And you forget how absolutely isolated from humanity you are out here. OK, if you're expecting me to be one of those survivalist, back-to-nature type YouTubers, think again. My entertainment for my first night in Tibbets is a bottle of Jack Daniels I brought from the mainland and the Miami Vice movie on my iPad. OK, as I settled into my first night on Lundy and in Tibbets, I wasn't to know that the peace and calm was not to last. OK, good morning. Taking advantage of what I expected to be a fairly bright and dry day, on my second morning at around first light, which is 0730 hours in the UK in December, I set out to visit my nearest neighbour to the north, the unmanned North Lighthouse, about an hour's walk from Tibbets. This aerial photo shows you the north end of Lundy Island. This is the location of Tibbets, where we're starting from, and this is where we're heading, the North Lighthouse. I have to say the second day started off beautifully with a great sunrise to the southeast at around 0745 hours. And about halfway towards the north light, looking back, you could see Tibbets silhouetted perfectly against the rising sun. However, this weather was not to last much longer. And here we are, after 45 minutes of walking across the moors, we've got to my nearest neighbour. Building wise, that is, there's no humans here. This is the North Lighthouse, completely unmanned and automated in 1981. It's a bit treacherous to get here and it's very windy, although the weather has brightened up somewhat. Uh, my nearest human neighbour is the old lighthouse, which is about two miles south of Tibbets, and we're going to go and look at that tomorrow. These precarious carved Victorian era steps lead down to the North Lighthouse and it pays to take your time getting down these. But as soon as I started down these steps, all hell broke loose. Yeah, as you can see, Atlantic weather and uh, from sunshine to torrential rain in the space of 10 minutes. Yeah, well, that's what you sign up for when you come out to this island, I'm afraid. Anyway, we're going to keep trying to head down to the uh, North Lighthouse. Uh, let's go. One of the greatest features of Lundy is there are no keep out signs. You can roam anywhere you want within reason. You can't go through people's front doors, obviously. And there are no nannying health and safety signs everywhere telling you that cliff edges are dangerous. I know that. You're responsible for your own safety on the island. So the result is you get to explore great and fascinating places like this, the North Lighthouse, that if it was on the UK mainland would be sealed off with fences and razor wire. The North Lighthouse, like its sister, the South Lighthouse, was built in 1898. It is completely automated and unmanned. At the foot of the North Light is Tibbet's little sister station. This is a one-man Admiralty lookout built around 1914 for the First World War, and it covered the north aspect of the Bristol Channel. One unfortunate Royal Navy rating would have to walk out from Tibbet's and crew the station during daylight hours to watch out for German battleships. And welcome to the afternoon of day three. With brighter weather, I thought I'd do another expedition, this time to my nearest neighbour to the south, the old lighthouse, and then a quick hop into the village to spend the evening in the tavern. But as soon as I stepped off, I got myself into a bit of bother. OK, I'm starting to really regret wearing this red jacket out now. Um, I'll show you why when I turn the camera around. This is going to go one of two ways. Uh, if it goes bad for me, uh, I'm on my own. There's also an ambulance strike. So if this big beast now decides to go for me, I'm probably not going to survive it. And you'll see why um, red probably wasn't a good idea. Morning mate, how you doing? Hello big fella, do you like red jackets? See ya! I think I've got away with that one. Uh, there's nobody here to save me if I did get uh, 
gourd, I think they call it, or murdered by cows. Put out my gravestone, murdered by cows on Monday. Them cows follow me. There's no crime on Lundy, even the cows are well behaved. And well, once you get south of the halfway wall, the island becomes a lot less wild and a bit more agricultural. So we're on our final bound now to the old lighthouse. If you're Gen X, you'll get this reference. And this island kind of is a sort of the countryside that appeared in the 1980 movie, An American Werewolf in London. And I'm expecting somebody to come up to me and say, stick to the roads, don't go on the moors. Boys, keep off the moors, stick to the roads. The best of luck. Thanks again. That reference will become more apparent when we go into the tavern tonight. And I'll tell you after I've visited the tavern, not while I'm in there, because I don't want to get hung. Uh, because we've got an unextended 24 hour, maybe 48 hour stay on the island. I think I have a few pints in the Morisco Tavern tonight. And uh, I hope you'll join me. But anyway, we're about 500 meters away from the old lighthouse now. And the sun's going down, so it's gonna be quite an interesting visit. Funnily enough, just after I filmed that sarcastic segment, I did in fact get a visit from one of the permanent residents of the island. Oh, yeah. Hey, you see you doing? Oh, I'm here. Um, so is that you going to the helicopter today tomorrow? Oh, no. Um, so, <laughs> unfortunately, it's too foggy, so it can't land. It. That, that's fine. Um, so, just, yeah, so you just can let people know. Um, but we'll be flying on Friday instead. Flying Friday normal time then? Yeah. All right, no, no, here, but so, until it's said. Okay, thanks for letting me know. No worries. Okay. Well, there you heard it. It's, um, <laughs> messenger by quad bike and the helicopter's cancelled tomorrow. Uh, this happens all the time. Uh, you have to accept it as part of coming to London. If your life can't be put on hold for a couple of extra days, then don't come out here. Fantastic, eh? Anyway, moving on from our bad news about the helicopter cancellation, we are now approaching the old lighthouse, which was built in 1821. This was once the highest elevation lighthouse in the United Kingdom, but because of that it was of limited use on Lundy, as it sat well above the perennial fog banks that plagued the island. It was eventually replaced in 1898 by the North and South Lighthouses. The attached keeper's houses are holiday homes, but you are free to visit the lighthouse itself and climb up to the lantern to observe the sunset. Well, so it's the highest point on the island, from the land's house of the Old Light, you can see virtually the whole of Lundy. And conversely, during daylight, it's a really good nav aid. If you ever get disorientated on Lundy, look for the Old Lighthouse and aim towards it to get your bearings. Well, I've been going about two hours from Tibbets. Now, if I walked in a direct line to the village from Tibbets, it'd take me about an hour. I've done a big dog leg around the Old Lighthouse, that's why it's taken so long. But I've still got here earlier than I thought, it's still bit of daylight left so I think I'll show you around the, the village itself. Now I hope you're not expecting Manhattan. The village in Lundy is a farm and about 20 houses, a tavern uh, and a, a shop. However there is uh, electric lighting, uh, no street light, I think there's one little light uh, but there is lighting inside the dwellings and inside the tavern. I'll explain more probably off camera about the tavern, um, they're not a big fan of electronics in there so the camera will not be on in the tavern and I won't be taking the iPhone out at any time. But what I'll do before it gets probably dark, I'll do a quick spin around the tavern itself. Lundy has about 25 permanent residents and they all live in the village. And I was told by the tavern manager Ress that the week I was staying there were 49 other visitors on the island. Again, all of these visitors will be staying in the village. In the summer months when the supply ship the MS Oldenburg is sailing, the head count in the island can go up to 250 a day with day trippers. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the village in this video because I was a day tripper in the summer and I've made a video about that. The link you can find in the top right hand corner which I describe the southern side of Lundy in much more detail. So just before dark I'm going to get settled into the Morisco Tavern, Lundy Island's pub and social hub. I'll describe the pub in a second, but some cool person on TripAdvisor once described this as twinned with the Slaughtered Lamb, which is the pub in the American Werewolf in London. Let me play you some footage just to make the point. All right. Well, whatever happens, it's, it's your fault. fault. Right. All right. Come on. <laughs> Hello. 
Hello. Hi. Nice to see you. It's uh, very cold outside. May we come in? Listen, at least it's warm in here. Look at that. Yeah, what about it? Excuse me! <laughs> well, what's that star on the wall for? You made me miss. Okay, there is no candle burning pentagonal on the wall in the Morisco Tavern. Just a Lundy ship sign and a ship's lantern. There was a bloke playing darts, but I don't think I made him miss. Okay, I'm going to kill off the analogy there. It's unfair. The bad rep from the Morisco comes, I think, from a previous management team who were religiously against any form of modern technology in the pub. You could be thrown out of the Morisco for getting your iPhone out, etc. Today, the current management is much more pragmatic, as long as you don't disturb other customers. The manageress and her staff are lovely, and contrary to the movie... The clientele are mainly visitors to the island, not devil-worshipping locals. The Morisco does excellent food and also excellent wines and beers. It is a bit expensive, but that's to be expected as everything needs to be imported from the mainland. I really enjoyed my visit to the Morisco and I would have come back on other evenings apart from the weather. And I thoroughly recommend it to you if you're staying on the island. The Morisco, as well as being the island's pub, has a secondary role. It is the island's emergency shelter and the doors are open 24 hours a day. It is the only building on Lundy with 24-7 electricity and an emergency telephone. Now, of course, this is of limited use to me staying in Tibbets, as I am an hour away on foot. After a few pints in the Morisco Tavern comes the payback. You are now going to have to navigate your way back to Tibbets in complete pitch darkness. For that reason, I recommend a couple of things. Make sure you take with you a really powerful LED head torch. And also, a backup torch in case your main light source fails. And also, don't drink too much. No exaggeration, if you don't have these three things in place, you're not getting home. It really is a good job I'm not superstitious, isn't it? Uh, because this is full-on American werewolf in London <laughs> scenario. Ah, oh, I'm fine. Uh, this island is safe as houses. The only thing, in a more pragmatic point of view, is that if I slip over and hurt myself, I'm on my own. Nobody's going to come and find me at the best uh, till first light tomorrow morning. Probably, if at all, tomorrow, if anybody comes up this way. So, I need to pick my footing well. This is unmistakably the halfway wall. I know that Tibbetts is another 500 metres on the track uh, from the halfway wall junction. So I know exactly where I am, even without sat nav. Uh, all I've got to do is keep on the track and not overshoot, and hopefully the light stick will stop me doing that. Well, here we are. Um, here's the light stick anyway, which I put out earlier. Tells me to turn right here. I am somewhat concerned that I've got no light coming from Tibbetts. I left both my lanterns on when I went out. I think that goes to show how easy it is to get lost on a Lundy in complete darkness. Had I not put the light stick out, I wouldn't have known to turn right because I really could not see the lights from Tibbetts from the main track, even though it was only 250 metres away. However, there was nothing to worry about. Even though I got back to Tibbetts in one piece, from midnight onwards it was absolutely impossible to sleep as a Atlantic storm hit us from the west. Good morning. Here we are, fourth day in London, the extra day that I really shouldn't have had. I should have been flying back to the mainland today, and obviously, news yesterday the helicopter's cancelled. 
I'm going to take you outside in a minute and show you why the helicopter's cancelled. It is absolute chaos out there. While we've been sleeping um, during the night, a weather system is coming off the Atlantic. It's brought really, really strong gale force winds, thick fog and heavy rain. It's chaos out there. We're not going to be doing anything today. I think I've shown you everything on the north of the island that's worth seeing. I'm just going to get dredged when we go outside. And I don't really feel the need to go into the village today. So we're going to sit the storm out today and see if we can fly back to the mainland tomorrow morning. Anyway, let's pop outside and see the chaos that is Lundy on the Thursday, the 23rd of December, 2022. I'm not even going to attempt to do a voice over now. As soon as I step out from behind the uh, shielding wall, uh, the gale force winds are going to hit us and you'll just be uh, whited out. Anyway, I'll turn the camera around and show you what's going on on the island. I think it's going to be humans up uh, this end of the island. I think most people are going to be bunkered down in the village today, and I'm not going anywhere near the village. I've got my friends, the big, enormous cows with huge, uh, sharp, pointy horns behind me, but they don't seem to be very interested in me. This is about as far as I'm going to walk from Tibbets at the moment. It's blowing an absolute gale. Uh, no fun at all. Um, right, let's go back to Tibbets and put the kettle on. There is a saying in all the uh, advertising material for Lundy, which it says, bring a sense of adventure. That ain't just a uh, tagline. They do mean it. You need a sense of adventure out here. If you are a non-hacker, you are not going to enjoy this island in the slightest. Yeah, for a start, we've had to put our lives on hold for 24 hours, maybe longer, because the helicopter's not flying. It's blowing an absolute hooli out here. Uh, torrential rain. And I'm lucky I've got Tibbets to myself, but I'm sure the village is uh, all bunkered down at the moment. If you want a sedate time to take your family, where everything's organised for you, go to Centre Park. So if you want something real, come to London. You know, look at how it's changed in just 24 hours. Anyway, uh, Tibbets is up uh, this track here, so I'm going to go back and put a kettle on. Oh, one more thing, Alina. I can't believe you turned down the opportunity to come out here. You would have loved it. Yeah, maybe not. So unfortunately I couldn't shoot any content on day four and I spent the whole day bunkered down sitting the storm out. Our Tibbets is ideal for this. It might be chaos and bedlam outside, but inside it's calm, toasty, with a roaring fire going. The only downside is every so many hours I had to venture out into the storm to the coal bunker to replenish my coal stock. In fact, I burnt through so much coal on day four in Tibbets, I single-handedly ruined Greta Thunberg's childhood. The severe storm only added to the sense of isolation in this unique place, and to be honest, I quite enjoyed the drama of it. So I ended up settling in for another night listening to Howling Wind. Well, good morning and welcome to Christmas Eve 2022, 24th of December at 6.30am here on Tibbets. This is supposed to be our last day on the island. But as you've seen from the tour outside, the weather is uh, still atrocious. A storm front has passed over us from the Atlantic and that's going across mainland England now as we speak. I'm no helicopter pilot, but I'm pretty certain the helicopter won't be flying in weather like this. However, on the plus side, then no quad bikes been out from the village to come and tell me the heliport's closed today. So I'm going to walk into the village. If nothing, I won't have wasted an hour's walk because I'll have a hot meal in the tavern and find out what the hell's going on. Oh, it's not looking good. I might be spending the whole Christmas here in Tibbets because I don't think uh, the helicopter will fly on Christmas Day or Boxing Day. Oh, well, let's go find out what's going on once uh, it finally gets properly light. 
Well, it's now 8 a.m. Uh, the weather has brightened up significantly. There's still a lot of uh, sea fog out there. It's still really windy. But a bit more confident the helicopter's going to be flying today. So I'm going to head into the village now. Uh, it could take me about an hour to get there. And um, goodbye, Tibbets. Um, uh, hopefully. Or I might be back in a couple of hours. We'll see. If not, then um, this is going to be close to the end of the video now. I think I'll do an outro uh, just to finish off the video if I do get back to the mainland. Anyway, let's go see if the helicopter's flying. Well, here we are at the village. Uh, I'm going to pop to the tavern, find out whether the helicopter's flying at all today, and I'm going to have some breakfast. Uh, it is quite bright, but it's really, really windy. Uh, in my opinion, it's, it's too windy for helicopters. And if you look over my shoulder now, it looks like there's another storm coming in off the Atlantic. Uh, it's not going to be good news, I think. Anyway. Well, I'm calling in to the island management office. It appears that air operations are still on today, unless the weather worsens significantly. So it's into the tavern for a full English breakfast and a coffee, and I wait until my flight is called. The tavern is also the village heliport's departure lounge. Finally, at 11am after five days in the remotest house in England, I'm on my way back home to the mainland. Well, I hope you enjoyed sharing this adventure with me. I certainly enjoyed my time on Lundy. To finish off this video, I just wanted to say that the island of Lundy gets over 80% of its income from visitors either stayers like me or day trippers so if you've been interested in what you've seen today and would like to visit the island of london yourself i've put links in the description for you to do your own research anyway thanks for watching bye now